So let's examine the following example in which we're going to use the first law of thermodynamics. So let's begin. Determine how much work is done by a pump to isothermically and slowly compress 3 liters of oxygen gas at 0 degrees Celsius and 1 atmospheric pressure to a volume of 1 liter. So we go from a volume of 3 liters to a volume of 1 liters isothermically. Assume that our oxygen gas is a diatomic ideal gas. So let's begin by looking at the following graph that depicts our compression. So our gas is compressed by the pump from position 1 to position 2 isothermically. That means that the temperature remains constant. So notice at position 1 our volume is given by V1 and that is equal to 3 liters. And at position 1 our pressure P1 is 1 atm. Now our ideal gas is compressed by the pump to position 2 where the volume V2 is 1 liter. And our pressure is higher but we don't actually know what that pressure is. So let's begin by recalling the first law of thermodynamics. According to our first law of thermodynamics, the change in internal energy of our ideal diatomic gaseous system is equal to the sum of the energy transferred into our system as a result of heat plus the work done by the surroundings on our system. So let's begin by noticing that we're dealing with a diatomic ideal gas. So that implies that the change in internal energy of our system is equal to 5 halves multiplied by n multiplied by r multiplied by change in T. Where n is the number of moles, r is the gas constant, and change in T is our change in temperature. Now because we're dealing with an isothermic expansion or actually isothermic compression, our change in T is zero. So if this is zero, this entire product goes to zero and the change in internal energy of our system is equal to zero. So this equation becomes as follows. Zero is equal to Q plus W. So that implies that Q is equal to negative W. So this basically means that the amount of heat that flows into our ideal gaseous system is the same as the amount of work that is done by the surroundings, by our pump, on our system. So in this case, the pump is our surroundings and our ideal oxygen gas is our system. So, once again, Q is equal to negative W means the amount of heat that is transferred into the system is equal to the amount of work done by our pump on our system. So, we basically want to calculate what this amount of work is. So, how much work does our pump do on our ideal gas to compress it? So we want to calculate the area underneath this curve. So to calculate the area, we have to integrate. So the amount of work is equal to the integral of dw from position 1 to position 2. Now dw is the same thing as the product of the pressure and the infinitely small change in volume. So this is equal to this, where 1 was replaced with v1 and 2 was replaced with V2. So we want to integrate with respect to the volume. Now because our pressure is, is not constant, we have to change this pressure to something volume. So from the ideal gas law, we know that the pressure times the volume is equal to N times R times T. So we essentially want to use this equation and represent the pressure in terms of the volume. So the pressure is equal to nRT divided by V. So we want to replace the pressure with this ex expression. And notice n, r, and t are all constants. So the product of n, r, and t is a constant. So we get the following result. 
the work that is done by our pump on our ideal gas system is equal to the integral from V1 to V2 of the product of NRT dV divided by the volume. Now NRT is a constant so we can bring that out of our integral and we get the following result. And now we can actually integrate. We get the following result. NRT multiplied by natural log of V from V1 to V2. And finally, we apply the laws of logs and we are left with the following result. The product of NRT multiplied by LN of the ratio V2 divided by V1. So, before we go on, before we actually use this equation to calculate the work, we have to calculate what the number of moles of gas is. Because we're dealing with a closed system, the number of moles of gas remains constant. So let's suppose we want to determine the number of moles of gas at position 1. So at position 1, we know the volume, we know the pressure, and we also know the temperature. So that means we can use the ideal gas law to calculate the number of moles of gas. Number of moles of gas is equal to the ratio PV divided by RT. Now, the pressure given in newtons per meter squared is 101,300 newtons per meter squared. The volume to convert from 3 liters to meters cubed, we simply multiply 3 times 1 times 10 to the negative 3. Now our R is simply our ideal gas constant, 8.314 joules per mole times Kelvin, and the temperature is, well we have to convert from Celsius to Kelvins, so we simply add 273 to that value. And we are left with 0.13 moles, so that's our N, and finally we can use this equation to calculate the work. The number of moles multiplied by the constant multiplied by the temperature in kelvins multiplied by the natural log of 1 divided by 3 because V2 is 1 and V1 is 3. We plug these values into our calculator and we get the following result. Negative 324 joules. So this amount of work is done on our system by our surroundings, by the pump. So the surroundings loses this much energy and this amount of energy is gained by our ideal gaseous system.